Hey guys, welcome back. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Ashley and this is a planty channel. So if you enjoy anything house plants, you know, plant shopping, plant tours, plant hauls, that kind of stuff, feel free to subscribe for future videos like this one. I do try to post a couple times a week some good planty content. I'm also on Instagram, so feel free to look me up on there. Um, I'm really excited for today's video. Uh, it's been something that's been requested for a while. And now that I actually have some time, I'm really excited to repot some of these plants. Now, all of these are still in their nursery pots and I'm dedicating today's video to aroids. Now, aroids are a super popular house plant, as many of you already know. Um, and they're so beautiful and there's so many different varieties, including, you know, monsteras, alocasias, philodendron, you know, their list goes on and on and they're so popular, quite rightly so, because I mean, look how beautiful these plants are. You know, I'm in Charlotte and it is beautiful here. Springtime is full on, finally, thank goodness. And I thought we would do like a relaxing repotting video and enjoy nature and the birds chirping. So the first thing we are going to do is actually make our soil today. Now I am not an expert and I'm going to be using um, products that I actually already had in the house. I will link a video below to Kaylee Ellen. Um, she has a full on video all about aroids and the type of, you know, potting soil that she makes for them and there's some great information in that video but today I'm just gonna be using the stuff I had at the house a lot of people tend to like make their own you know soil without using any kind of pre-made soil um, and that is a fantastic option if you're able to do that however you know that can get very expensive I really recommend this brand I did a lot of research before I you know, decided on this one. And this company is just fantastic and their products are top notch. And they have a variety of different products depending on what you need. They have their like organic potting soil, their all purpose potting soil. They also have orchid mix. Um, I mean, they have cactus and succulent. I will be putting a link below to their different products that I recommend. Uh, also, there is a coupon as well for a discount for you guys, which is awesome. Very excited about that. These plants actually, they enjoy um, an airy soil, you know, something that's moist but not wet. We don't want them to get root rot. And they, like I said, enjoy like an airy soil. So they do prefer more of a chunky soil. So the first thing I'm doing is throwing in some all-purpose potting soil. I'm just going to eyeball it, but we'll say probably 40% or so potting soil. And as you can see, there's all sorts of good stuff in here. There's already some chunkies, but in order to make it a little bit chunkier, so I'm going to be adding this orchid potting mix, Better Grow, and I'll be putting a link to it below. I actually ordered this from Amazon, and I like adding this one because it is maximum chunky. Like, look at all that good chunk in there. Um, and this is really what we want to add in there to provide some of that good aeration, and then it also, you know, retains a little bit of the moisture in here as well. However, I will be keeping some of this as a top dressing for our pots, and I'll get into that later. Always recommend using like a mask or something because there is a lot of like dust and stuff and you can wear gloves if you want. I don't mind getting my hands dirty. I kind of like it. You can measure it perfectly or eyeball it. I'd say at least 30% this stuff. And it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, as long as it's a good airy soil. Now we are going to put in a little bit of perlite as well and the perlite that i'll be using is actually this brand i will link it amazon um delivered it for me so that was nice and with perlite you definitely want to put a mask up i'm just gonna do like a nice top coat here Sometimes it's better to have too much aeration than too little, I'd say. That looks pretty good, I think. I think that looks pretty good. This looks like it has some activated charcoal in here, which is good as well. Now, if you don't wanna use perlite, you can use pumice as well. The pumice is more expensive or, you know, kind of like gravel, whatever you wanna call it. The pumice won't float to the top where, you know, the little perlite will. So, I think that looks pretty good. 
let's start potting it up. I'm going to get started. First, we're going to do this beautiful Monstera adansonii. I absolutely love this plant. This is the wide leaf form, um, which I tend to like the wide leaf form because I really like that the fenestrations get so huge. He's doing really well, obviously still in his nursery pot from when I ordered him from Logies. And he's just like desperate to climb, like, really, really, really wants to climb something. I ordered this moss pole from Amazon and actually it came with two of them, which is cool. And I'll put the link below. Um, it was under $20, you know, free shipping. And I really like this one because it stakes in, which is great and easy, but then in the top, it has a little hole. So when it gets tall enough, you can go ahead and just, you know, put the other one in here to make the pole taller instead of having to like redo it all. So we're going to just be going a little bit bigger on the pot. Of course, you don't wanna to go too big when repotting. And I actually ordered a bunch of these pots from Amazon because you can get quite a few of them for a reasonable price and this one's plastic. Um, also wanted to mention that if you don't have bark or you know something to make the soil airy, go with more perlite or more pumice and like really up it up to 50% is fine. You know, you just wanna get that soil airy so that the roots have the best opportunity to breathe. Now, if you don't um, have a really aerated or chunky soil, a lot of people will put like gravel or perlite at the bottom of the pot um, to help the roots be able to get to water without getting saturated in that root rot. Now, a lot of times it's actually a good idea to wait until your plants are kind of dried out to repot it and I tried to do that with a lot of these plants and was successful, but this one needed some water. So the soil's a little bit wet. So I went ahead and moistened the moss pole. I just kind of let it soak for a few minutes um, just so that it has some good moisture for Francis. Now this plant's name is Francis. My husband named him after Pope Francis because he is holy. Yes, that is what I have to live with every day. Oh, he's gonna be so happy. I mean, ever since I got him, all he's wanted to do is be a climber. Pope Francis looking good with his little moss pole. That was so easy to do, guys. Like, that was crazy how easy that was to do. All right, on to the next. So the next one that we are going to do is this Monstera Peru. Such an easy plant, by the way. Like, I absolutely am obsessed with this plant. So one of the things that I want to do for these is actually put some of the orchid bark on top of the plants because it not only kind of looks nice and is aesthetically pleasing, but um, it helps prevent gnats and helps control gnats. And then it also, you know, prevents seeing the perlite that soaks up. I did keep a little bit of the orchid bark for that very reason. How good that looks. Looks good, right? Next up, we're gonna do this beautiful philodendron, Brazil. I don't have a name for this one yet, so let me know what you guys think would be a good name for this guy. So easy, doesn't need anything. Like, I love this plant. And just so beautiful. Let's just kind of get some of the soil off, do a little tickle on it. I know, I don't like that expression either, but I hear people say that they tickle their plant's roots. I don't know. You know what I like about this is that it's not an exact science. It's just experimenting, seeing what works. You know, I say that because I am hugely intimidated by stuff like this. Repotting, making my own soil, get out of here. Um, it seems to me like it's a big reason why I haven't repotted a lot of my plants because I kind of, I got analysis paralysis trying to figure out what to do and I decided, you know what, just do my best. Right guys? All right, so I was about to repot this and I was kind of examining it. Um, her name's Cha Cha. 
she's my tiny dancer. And it looks like she has some spider mites on her. I am going to not repot her today and I'm just gonna do some treatments on her. I've seen like hydrogen peroxide treatments and you know, neem oil. So I'm gonna, you know, try that out and then I'm just gonna keep a super close eye on my other plants that she was around. Fortunately, she wasn't around a lot of other plants, but Cha-Cha's not gonna be able to get repotted today. So to the side, Cha-Cha. On to the next. Just go ahead and do this Alocasia Maharani, which is an absolute stunner. So these actually prefer to be pretty root bound. I actually am not going to go in a pot that's much bigger than the existing pot, um, but I am just going to give it, you know, a fresh burst of new soil and nutrients due to the fact that we're coming into springtime and I just wanna, you know, give them a little boost for some awesome growth. Looks very nice. Next one. You know, repotting is a good opportunity as well to just like check on the health of all your beer plants, see how the roots are doing. One of the risks of using a lot of these organic products and you know natural products like bark and that kind of thing is pests. Um, it's organic material and you know pests could be living in there. So one of the things that I see a lot of people do is they'll treat their soil before they actually do the repotting. One of the things that I've seen people do is treat their soil beforehand with hydrogen peroxide mixed with water or um, even like put their soil in the oven to bake it off and you know kill off any pests that might be living. So I did not do that today. However, that is an option, um, you know, as a good preventative measure for pests. Oh, look how pretty. And this is a new baby leaf that came out recently. I love this Maharani. It's gorgeous. These are also known a lot of times as Grey Dragon, I think. So this one is Danny and this one is Drogo of Game of Thrones. Danny and Drogo. So moving on to this beautiful Alocasia fry deck. And this thing just is putting out leaves, man. Like every week a new leaf. I mean, look at this new growth that's happening here. So I wanted to go ahead and repot it so it can have, you know, the entire summer to pump out as much new foliage as it would like. It's a very easy plant. So I absolutely love it. It actually does enjoy being a little bit root bound as well. So you don't want to go too big on the pot and um, it's okay being a little bit root bound. Yes. How nice is that? They have some brand new soil. I tend to water actually, like I do like to do bottom up watering where I'll put them in my tub and let them soak. But for the first time, just to make sure that the soil is like well drained as well as moist, but just instead of like saturating it like I normally would, um, I'm going to water from the top down the first time. I actually like to give them like a little boost of plant food. And I use Newt by Organic Plant Food and I just mix it in um, with my watering can. And this is how it looks. This stuff is awesome. And it's like that and you just like, you know, put however much into your watering can as you want. But um, so I will be using this plant food Oh, I'm so relieved that I was able to actually repot some of these plants that have been needing it for a while. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please hit like and subscribe for future videos like this one. Also look me up on Instagram. Um, I have some really cool videos coming up I'm excited about. So yeah, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of the day. Um, I will see you soon. Bye.